No. Well, let's speak to Ramesh Sri Vanifsan about this. He's an associate professor at the Department of Information Studies at UCLA and is joining us from Los Angeles. Thank you very much for being with us on Al Jazeera. Verifying users' ages is often tricky. How difficult do you think it will be enforced to enforce this? And can Florida ban this ban on minors' work? Well, it's next to impossible to enforce this for many different reasons. I mean, for as, as we all know, what we see online is we're not clear where it comes from. And it's very difficult to ascertain any sort of real identity when it comes to being online. Um, so I don't think the, the this bill is likely to go through. Um, it, it's likely to be challenged constitutionally, and it's extremely difficult to implement. So I think it's it's ultimately a very flawed measure for a number of reasons. Um, most importantly, because remember, most teenagers uh, grow up on social media. So to cut off sort of their main organ, if you will, of communication with the wider world is not only disenfranchising and alienating for them, but it actually will, it, it will, it will appear like a hydra. You know, you cut one organ off, people will find other ways of getting online. Mm. So I just don't think that's the right approach. It's very restrictive, and it plays to the governor's uh, culture wars sort of platform yeah. and his policy. And, and as you say, it's expected there'll be legal challenges on, on of this because of, of the free speech rights enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. Uh, Florida is not the, the right. first state to enact, to, to consider this law. There are other states who have indicated that they want to do something similar. Let's imagine that it withstands legal challenges. What happens then when different states have varied laws? Well, it's going to create even more chaos, most likely, right? And um, and and we know, I mean, and we know fully well that social media as it stands is not necessarily healthy for young people. It may not really be healthy for any of us. Yeah. Um, we know that social media is correlated with depression amongst young people, but it's also sort of like fundamental in our lives. It's become like a pipe, just like water or electricity or the internet itself. So the question is, is how do you regulate those technologies so you ensure that they serve and support the safety of younger people. And those forms of regulation can't be piecemeal. They can't be statewide approaches or even, you know, local ordinances. They have to be enshrined on a federal level and they have to be applied by nation states to all of their citizens. And so we can really think about regulating social media so that the most heinous and hateful content, including fake content, AI content, bot content, all of that is watermarked, is transparent, and the most heinous content is not made most visible on these platforms. That's the worst part of it. Younger people are often exposed to the worst of that which is on social media because the platforms themselves algorithmically often serve content uh, that's predicted to arouse engagement. They're not looking for the most hateful content, mm. the platforms, but the algorithms are predicting what will grab people's attention and all of our attention always goes to things that are most outrageous right uh, and as you say instead of banning social media access it would be perhaps better to improve parental uh, oversight tools improve access to, to data uh, uh, to stop bad actors now there's also of course the, right regulation as you said there's a the question of course of who should be enforcing social media for children who should regulate our kids' social media use? Is it the government or is it us as parents? It should never be the government, right? And it, and it because that's it's very far removed. It's very far removed from the actual lives of a young being, right? So at the, at the end of the day, I don't know if it's it, the regulation in terms of policy restricting these platforms so they serve uh, the civic purpose. They serve democracy, which is about constructive discussion. It's not about hate being viral. That is the job of the state. But the actual relationships young people have are with their parents, with their teachers, with their communities, with their peers. It's those groups that really have to be the ones that are, you know, in are, are provided with the tools to to so that they can they can mentor one another and support one another to recognize that a lot of what they see online is not real. It's designed to kind of provoke them. And um, and I think it's those groups that actually have to be the ones mm. that essentially mediate experience for younger people. So it's not about restricting. Like I said, it will be like a hydra. You right. cut one, one head off, other heads grow. So it's we have to find something more.
and more tolerant of the realities young people are facing all around the planet. Indeed. So interesting to talk to you about this. Thank you so much, Ramesh Srinivasan from Hi. UCLA for joining us on Al Jazeera. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.